Hello everybody. Here are your 2016-2017 uh, astrological trends for this coming year. The first thing to notice is that we've got a lot going on in the mutable signs of Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius and Pisces. And the mutable signs are the signs that are the most flexible, the signs that can change and turn and very often can't make up their minds. But nonetheless, they're looking at different aspects, they're looking at different perspectives. If we look at Gemini, it's the twins, there's two of them. If we look at Pisces, it's the fish, there's two of them. So. Um, it's going to be a wonderful opportunity this year to be able to make for humanity, to make some massive strides forward. We really can turn things around quite quickly without the fixed signs there holding us back, which they sometimes can do. Sometimes they're good for determination and courage and sticking in there. But with this mutable energy that I'm seeing, we'll have the opportunity to take great leaps uh, a leap of progress, for example, in space travel, a leap of progress in medicine. We're going to see massive leaps as the potential for this coming year. We've also got the cardinal signs strongly at play, particularly Aries, Libra, Capricorn, and by reflection also Cancer will come into it. And the cardinal signs are about action, taking action, doing things, actually making something happen. So we've got Pluto still in Capricorn. <clears throat> and the thing about Pluto is that Pluto is in the mid degrees of Capricorn. So around 15 degrees or so of Capricorn during this year. So it's very strong. It's like it's mired in the middle of the sign. So since 2008, when uh, Pluto first went into Capricorn, we started to see massive changes in our structures. We had the great economic crisis, the banking, um, all kinds of earth uh, crises have been hitting us. And Pluto in Capricorn now in these mid degrees, I think we're going to see much more digging deeper into uh, doing away with structures uh, in our lives, both personally and globally, that no longer serve us. And they may have to be dug out, literally dug out, because Pluto just uh, doesn't leave a stone unturned. It wants to get everything out of there by its roots so that it can't grow again. Anything that wasn't working isn't going to be allowed to grow again. There will be no seeds left for it to do so. And that's the purpose of this restructuring of our planet until 2024, which is the length of time that uh, Pluto is going to be in Capricorn. But it's especially strong in those mid degrees, continuing with the restructuring of everything. Our banks, our governments, our country, our recycling, what we do with resources, all of these things are going to be uh, coming further into question. Uh, the big one we've got going, of course, is Saturn in Sagittarius. Uh, Sagittarius rules everything to do with religion, beliefs. And uh, we are certainly seeing now more and more coming out, more things being said. Uh, uh, Sagittarius is the sign that blurts things out. It's the sign that, you know, if you ask a Sagittarian, how do I look in this dress? They're going to tell you. <laughs> so it might not be what you want to hear, but Sagittarius will say it. So we are going to hear people saying and sharing their religious beliefs their spiritual beliefs, no matter how crazy they may sound to some of us, this is going to get aired. I think we're certainly seeing that very much uh, with the candidates for the US elections. Boy, there are a lot of them and they're all expressing their different points of view. And in true mutable uh, quality, uh, a lot of them are changing their minds and coming up with different stories as things change. So we are going to see a lot of changes happening in everything to do with religion and belief systems. And there is going to be a breakdown of certain belief systems. I love this quote by Gandhi. Gandhi saying, simple acts of kindness are far more important than a thousand heads bowing in prayer. We're going to start questioning the rituals of religion. 
I'm not siding in any way at all. I'm saying that there will just be a questioning of why are we doing these things? Why are we going to these places and why are we doing these particular activities? How can we access our spirituality differently? This, this too will come into question. I did the video about the Pope, some of whom uh, liked it, some of whom really disliked it, but I do believe that we are going to see softer leaders. Leaders who are ready for change. The mutable energy of Sagittarius shooting its arrows out into the world for change, for different kinds of leadership. The tough, heavy, plutocratic leadership is going to have to change as we go through this transit of Saturn in Sagittarius until the end of 2017. Of course, sadly, it's going to throw up all kinds of issues about immigration. And um, it's also going to, um, I'll come to that a little bit more as I uh, go uh, through the square later with Neptune. But uh, suffice to say, um, we're going to be looking at the rules, the rules and the regulations. Are they working for us? Do they need to change? Do those structures of the rules need to change? Immigration, for example, let's get back to that. <laughs> Are we going to keep trying to put up more fences and more boundaries between us personally and globally? Um, it looks as though uh, I'm coming to this square now anyway. Let's look at this square with Neptune. It seems to be coming out now. We've got for most of this year the vibration of this. It's the main aspect with the square with Neptune in Pisces. So Neptune in Pisces doesn't want boundaries, doesn't recognize boundaries. And Saturn in Sagittarius is, is really questioning now. These are mutable signs. We've got a chance for change. We've got a chance for something new to happen. The immigration situation is going to, uh, in my opinion, accelerate at this time. At the time of the conjunction in 1989, these two planets were conjunct. Now they are, and that was the uh, fall of the Berlin Wall. Another structure fell away, a very important one. Now we're at the square. What other structures need to go? What's going to happen with this immigration situation? Are our leaders in the mid degrees of Capricorn going to dig their heels in and say, We're, this is our country, these are our rules, these are our regulations, this is how it must be done? Or are the mutable signs going to force some change? And the thing about the mutable signs is they, they meander a little bit. They don't necessarily go directly head on with facing uh, uh, the powers that be. They go round. They go round things, they skirt round things. So an example would be, uh, yes, we've got our mainstream media, but then there's a lot of other media out there that we can now watch, that we're free to watch. And we can see other things that are going on in our world, other things that are really quite positive in our world as well. That doesn't mean to say that there aren't dark and evil things coming. There are dark and evil things that are here and some will be coming. And I like to quote uh, Spock here, who said, uh, without Followers, evil cannot spread. So let's see where the followers go. Let's see where the leadership comes because uh, really um, there's a lot of questioning of leadership as well. And there's going to be more questioning of leadership as this square comes more strongly into play. There's going to be questioning our leaders. Are the leaders that we've got really compassionate? Are they bringing compassion? Are they bringing uh, uh, Neptune energy in Pisces? Or are they bringing same old, same old of harsh structures, of violence, of aggression, of a tooth for a tooth, an eye for an eye? None of which, of course, has worked over centuries. We are probably going to see evidence of aliens. I think this is going to get stronger here. It's going to be some amazing findings around spirits and aliens. And I think that uh, since uh, Sagittarius rules uh, education, I think that we're going to see uh, e-learning take off in a new way. 
and I think that because it's Sagittarius, we're going to see a lot more games, a lot more play in learning. How can we make learning fun? For so many years, particularly when I was young, you know, you had to learn rote, you had to learn this and that and the other. There were so many things you didn't want to learn and they made you learn. Now, it isn't to say that there aren't certain things that we maybe do need to know, but boy, we could have a lot more fun with it, couldn't we? A lot more play with it. And I think that this Saturn in Sag is going to bring more play into this whole dynamic of learning. I also think we're going to see more freelancing. People just uh, uh, being doing consulting, doing project work, work coming and going. For you people who want fixed, permanent, uh, long-term jobs, uh, the, the, the dynamic's going to be changing uh, in these years. It really is. We're going to be uh, having to change and move with more variety in our work. Look, uh, be willing to change, maybe learn new skills. Uh, but if you're looking always for this permanent long-term work, I think this structure is changing, especially during this uh, mutable influx that we're getting during this time. It's a little bit like these immigrants, you know, they're not going to be able to stop them. They're going to come, it's going to happen. We are going to just see a melding and a mixing of humanity. I mean, we all want the same things. Ultimately, ultimately, we're all wanting love and wanting to receive and give love. That's ultimately what it's all about. Um, and so this is uh, what is being stirred in the pot, shall we say, for this coming year. Uranus is still in Aries, and of course Uranus in Aries, uh, Aries is the fighter, is the warrior, but it's also the individual. It's encouraging you to be the individual that you are, to speak your truth, to say what is important to you in every given moment, whatever that might be and really not to look for approval necessary, but necessarily, but to say and express what is true and what is real for you. So much of the time we're frightened of saying, oh, better not say that, better not do that, better not this. Ah, we're tippy-toeing around, almost like walking on eggshells, isn't it? No, no more with Uranus in Aries we can expect some wild cards. But it's exciting, in a way, wild cards are the unexpected. Otherwise, doesn't it get boring every day? You get up, you do your teeth with the same hand, you cook in the same way, you make the same breakfast. Ah, same, same. No time for same old, same old this year. It won't be possible because of this cardinal and mutable energy. You won't be able to just grind yourself into the ground, into a particular rut. And if you cannot be frightened about it, if you can turn the fear into fascination, into something exciting about this, then um, this can be a whole new energy and you can be finding yourself, your individuality. Each of us has an individual stamp, an impression of something that is completely unique. That's why I love astrology. When I do personal charts, I see a unique person. It's just you, it's your fingerprint, and it's unique to you. So this Uranus in Aries is encouraging you more to do what is you, just you, and to focus on that, and to allow it to come out. Because don't worry, we've got the balance coming up. In uh, September of, the year, of this year, we've got Jupiter going out of Virgo and coming into the opposite sign of Aries, Libra. And boy is this a change in tone. Jupiter stays in a sign for a year, so Jupiter into Libra will bring up everything concerning relationships. We're going to see leaders uh, talk about peace, harmony, love. These are all going to be the themes. Strong, strong themes. How can we achieve balance in our world? The balance between people bringing out their individuality, but also accepting one another. Jupiter in Libra is about accepting one another. Libra is the first sign, the first six signs. Virgo may be a little accept, uh, exception to that, but nonetheless are about self and development of self in many ways. Libra is that first sign that wants to share. It doesn't have balance in its life if it's all for me. 
I want to share this with you. I want to share this glorious sunset with you. I want to go dancing with you. I want to go to a conference with you. Let's travel to Hawaii together. Let's do a conference together. This is the excitement of this Jupiter in Libra. Jupiter in Libra will be Truly, we're going to have this vibration of the Libra energy and the Neptune in Pisces and we are going to be looking for this higher vibration of love. The heart connection with one another. You're going to see people, the US elections as they start hotting up, but particularly as, as we get into sort of uh, August, September time where this Jupiter in Libra comes, it's going to get stronger where you will see the leaders will start talking more and more about peace, about harmony, not so much about war. Those were the leaders that talk about war and going into further war and fighting, those leaders are not going to find the kind of following that the leaders are going to have who talk more about harmony and reaching out to one another and coming up with new solutions that work for all of us. And we will see more and more leaders talking about peace and love. And those are the ones that are going to draw more of a following. The softness, the gentleness that I'm talking about, Libra, the, the Pisces, the mutable energies here coming because in the eclipses, the eclipses are mainly in Pisces, we've got two in Pisces, one in Virgo and one in Libra. So the eclipses in March and September will be underlining these themes. Will it be easy? No, we are living in a complete shifting time. Still, we've got the square going on between Pluto and Uranus for much of this year. It may be waning, but the vibrations are still there. So there will be those fighting, there will be the darker forces. But here we do have these lighter forces and this opportunity for change and for some tremendous leaps forward. And really, I, I really want to st close with John Lennon's word, words, because it very much epitomizes Jupiter in Libra. Uh, that uh, song, uh, John Lennon's Imagine, was actually released on the 9th of uh, September 71. 9th of September 71, and at that time, Sun and Venus were conjunct together in Virgo. But a conjunction of Sun and Venus, Venus, Libra's ruler here, accentuating that. So imagine all the people living life in peace. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will live as one. That is my dream for this coming year, if we can set some of that into motion, that is my dream. I'd love to hear your comments um, and anything that you'd like to share. I'm always delighted to hear from every single one of you, whatever your perspective is. But I'm interested to hear whether you've got some solutions, whether you've got some new ideas um, as to how we bring about these mutable, uh, great transitions that are possible with these energies for this coming year. I wish you a very happy, loving, harmonious New Year. From my heart to your heart, sending you love. <laughs>